You may not have heard of him, but Sir Francis Galton was a Victorian genius. The renowned polymath was born here in Birmingham, England in 1822 and was responsible for many notable scientific advancements in the 19th century, including the development of fingerprint classification, psychometric testing and the first weather map. He's even credited with inventing the questionnaire. But despite such accomplishments, Perhaps Galton's most important and influential legacy is unknown to most people, hidden inside an obscure contraption named after him, the Galton Board. Invented in 1876, the board was used by Galton to develop some of the most powerful concepts in yet another field he worked in, statistical mathematics. He was very interested in biology and medicine and the application of mathematics to it. And in particular interested in um, how certain characteristics are inherited. And that interest in passing on genes, as it were, was actually how he came up to be interested in statistics. He was particularly curious about why certain human characteristics, such as height, instead of randomly varying within a population, appeared to vary in a very orderly, recognisable way and specifically according to something called a normal distribution. The normal distribution is often known as the bell curve. It's this um, curve which has a shape like a bell, so it's very high in the middle and low towards the edges, and it can be used to describe a wide range of naturally occurring phenomena from heights, for example, through to IQ scores. Typically, a large number of people will be clustered around the, the mean behaviour, the average behaviour for a particular trait, be that the average height or the average IQ, but there will be some people who are way out in the tails of this distribution, but not very many of them. And so this, this bell curve characterises the frequency of occurrence of this particular trait in a population. This phenomenon of normal distribution fascinated Galton, and what he wanted to do was to provide a practical demonstration of why it occurs. The Galton board does just that. The design consists of a vertical array of pegs ordered according to a quick unks pattern. A large number of beads introduced from a centre point at the top of the board make their way through the pattern, eventually coming to rest in one of several bins uniformly arranged across the bottom. What you find is that you get this really beautiful normal distribution mapped out by the shape of the beads. Now, the reason for that is that there are far more ways to get to these central bins than there are to get to the bins at the extremes. Now each of these beads, every time it gets to a peg, it goes left or right with equal probability, 50-50. So if I'm thinking about getting out to this bin, then every time a bead hits a peg to get out there, it has to go the same way every single time. The same if I'm trying to get to this other extreme. But in the middle, there are lots of different paths, sometimes going left, sometimes going right. And these left and right movements will somehow cancel each other out and they'll end up tending to head towards the centre of this distribution far more. So this is the beauty of this Galton board. It generates this predictable normal distribution from what is effectively a random process. Now, to be precise, the beads form what is known as a binomial distribution and not a normal one. But there's a good reason why we can call it a normal distribution. A binomial distribution occurs when you have to make multiple binary choices, which is exactly what's happening in the Galton board. Now we have a tool in mathematics which is called the central limit theorem, which effectively says that if I have enough of these independent random variables stacked together, these binary trials when the bead hits a peg, which allows us to say that this binomial distribution is well approximated by a normal distribution. The central limit theorem is arguably one of the most important in all of statistics. Essentially, it explains why the normal distribution is so commonly seen, particularly in social studies, such as Galton's into human traits. We see the normal distribution a lot in the natural world because we have lots of these composite random variables adding together 
either give us an addition to that trait or, or a subtraction from that trait. It might be that there are a number of uh, different genes which contribute to the final height of an individual, which will be inherited from parents. And there might also be a wide range of different environmental factors which contribute. Each one of these will be a random process, not necessarily determined beforehand. If you have very tall parents and you have good nutrition and various other beneficial factors, then you might find yourself being very tall, but actually it's likely that a lot of these composite factors will cancel each other out and you'll end up much nearer to the, the mean height, uh, which is where this normal distribution comes in. And that's a consequence of this mathematical central limit theorem. The central limit theorem allows us to use the normal distribution in a multitude of scenarios. From quantum physics to biometrics, from stock market returns to resource allocation and quality control. Customers arriving at a counter, telephone calls coming into a system, even the number of yeast cells used when brewing a Guinness can all be represented by the normal distribution. These normal distributions occur in everyday life and we can, we can make a link between these abstract mathematical concepts and these real world concepts and I think the real power of, of this Galton board is to illustrate that we can find patterns even in seemingly random places. It's a whole series of random events, these balls moving through this array of pegs, it reproduces a reliable normal distribution, a pattern that we can well characterise. I think that this is what mathematics is all about, finding patterns in places where you might not expect it and I hope that this sort of thing will infuse people to try to understand how ubiquitous mathematics really is in our everyday lives. If you would like your own Galton board for use in your school, museum, office or even at home, then go to galtonboard.com.